The photo I'm about to show you should not exist. There is great controversy over where Mount Lyons roam in the United States today. And the photo you see right here is an example of Mount Lyons that have crossed some kind of imaginary boundary of where they're not supposed to exist. The Mount Lion, also called the Cougar, Panther in Florida, Catamount in Canada, and many names in its very huge range, is one of the most elusive animals in North America. Even in states like Colorado, that have large populations that are well studied, there are hunters who spent their whole lives there and have only seen tracks. The photo you see here was taken in the piney woods of East Texas along the Louisiana border. An official designation of mountain lion range in Texas does not include the piney woods of East Texas. In fact, there used to be a map distributed that showed their known population west of Interstate 35 in the Dallas-Fort Worth area and their core population in the Trans-Pecos of West Texas with a smaller population, but substantial in Southern Texas. East Texas is not supposed to be a cougar range, according to a lot of people. But we see that people are seeing these great cats far beyond where they're supposed to be. East Texas is one of those places. We have another photo from a friend of mine from Newton County, Texas as well. Check out that photo right here. It's a little blurrier, but definitely a cougar. Because one of the problems is I get photos sent to me all the time of well-meaning people who have a photograph of either a bobcat or a feral domestic cat on a trail camera, and they think it's a mountain lion. This is very, very common. I probably have received 300 plus bobcat photos that people thought could possibly be a mountain lion. That's no slight on them. Not everyone's a wildlife identification expert. But even this slightly blurred in, when you see the long tail, that's absolutely the real thing, a mountain lion. Jasper County, Texas. This is another one that was submitted to me, and this hasn't been out there circulated around. Obviously, a male cat from the photo, as you see here. And this is definitely a larger cat than you see in the other photo. Judging from the scale and talking with the hunter who sent that photo to me, I think that is a young cat in the first photo. And the other one could possibly be the same cat because it was taken the same year in Newton County. And I think that cat is probably in the uh, 75 to 85 pound range, having worked a lot with uh, captive mountain lions over the years, getting a pretty good idea of scale. But this cat right here, even though it's closer to the camera, is a large adult male. We're talking 120 pound plus cat. Now, the problem is wildlife in the eastern half of the country was basically wiped out for many years uh, due to market hunting and a lot of other things, environmental changes. And then when we started protecting white-tailed deer and wild turkeys and all this, predator populations came back as well. It is my belief that mountain lions were never completely wiped out of the southeast, the northeast, or certainly not in the area of the Arklatex where I live. They've always been here, but they've been in lower numbers. And now we have trail cameras to show proof that there are indeed these great animals living in areas where they're not supposed to be. And I say not supposed to be, that's because some uh, wildlife agencies are very hesitant to say that there are mountain lion populations in their state. Uh, Texas had another example of one in the eastern part of the state, and that is one that was road killed uh, in East Texas. And this photo was distributed all over the place by officials who said, yes, one of the officers ran into this big cat in East Texas. Now, these animals have large home ranges. Back in 1997, when I was in college and uh, very young, I got to accompany um, a couple of biologists from the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department and a graduate student or two out into an area in South Texas and radio collar animals. I got to document that on photos. You see the picture of me here. They took the babies out of then and put these collars with elastic on. They would grow for a certain amount. Then they would go and capture the animals again and re-collar them. And the amazing thing in that study, they found out that there was a male in that study 
that would move every year 125 miles. He would go from South Texas into the interior of Mexico. Pretty incredible. So these animals have large home ranges. And although they're called a mountain lion, I typically call them a cougar. Uh, that's what we call them here in East Texas. But mountain lion is the most common name. So that's why I'm using it here. People think of them being only in the mountains. And it's kind of a misnomer because these animals live from the Florida panther subspecies. I was just down in Florida, and you'll see pictures of me here with Florida panther crossing signs. I was in the Everglades last week. You have the animals down there. They're down in Argentina. They are in the rainforest, which is absolutely amazing to think about this animal. Very diverse animal, incredibly strong animal, able to kill a bull elk. Now, a bull elk can be 800 pounds, and these animals are strong enough to be able to kill a bull elk. Very effective, efficient, elusive predators. But there seems to be a lot of controversy over whether they exist basically east of eastern Texas. So basically take, once again, go back to that old uh, map I used to see with I-35, East Texas onto the eastern seaboard is very controversial, but game cameras are showing that these animals are there. But they can live right under people's nose. As a matter of fact, there was one living behind the Hollywood sign in Hollywood, California. Amazing. And living in that large urban, suburban environment near the Hollywood sign. And that's happened around here. Uh, people have had encounters with cats that are very reliable people that work in the refineries. I've seen some around there. I had my own encounter. This is what really got me super interested in these animals. When I was 14 years old, about a half mile that way from I'm sitting right now, I would go sometimes after school in the fall and winter and I would rabbit hunt with my pellet gun down by the road tracks. And I, I saw one from 10 yards away. And the interesting thing about this, if I could print my mind out, I have a perfect picture of it. Um, it turned and looked at me like this and then it jumped over the levee. There was a rice levee right there in these rice fields. It jumped over the levee and disappeared. I ran home and believe it or not, two houses down from me, the house is still sitting there, two houses down, there was a family who had a mount line as a pet. And I called them to make sure their cat didn't get loose. They had the cat on a runner in the backyard. And she went and looked. She said, no, Sandy's out there. That was the name of the cat. She goes, it must be the male. I said, what male? She goes, Sandy went into heat last week. And there's been a male calling back and forth to her from the railroad tracks. Well, their house is only about 75 yards from the railroad tracks. And it's the big set of woods that I was actually rabbit hunting in. So it was an interesting confirmation of my sighting. And also... I knew what mountain lions looked like. I was obsessed with these kind of animals from books, but I saw one many times over at my neighbor's house. So we appreciate you subscribing. If you don't subscribe, please subscribe to Chester Moore, wildlife journalist and investigator for cool wildlife content.